Alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna sayyidina muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'd يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين آمنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله بأموالهم وأنفسهم أعظم درجة عند الله وأولئك هم الفائزون Sadaq Allah Al-Azim All praises are for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala We glorify Him and we give thanks unto Him I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah He is alone and He has no partner And I testify that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Is His servant and final messenger Ribad Allah, servants of Allah my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran about the fa'izun, the ones who would be successful, the ones who would be given status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says in the Quran describing them, Alladina amanu, those who believe. Wahajarun <clears throat> and they migrate. Wajahadu and they struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi sabilillah bi amwalihim wa anfusihim with their wealth and with their personal selves. A'zamu darajatan they will have the, the greatest of status in the law with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa ulaika humul faizun. And these are the ones who would be successful, or these are the ones who would achieve success. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are in a new year. And when we think about the new year in Islam, we always reflect upon the migration of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We reflect upon his struggles in Mecca and his flight from Mecca to Medina and the purpose of it. Why? was this done in the plan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had in store for our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this ummah my dear brothers and my dear sisters let us reflect a little on the bounties and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of the way he has designed things for us so as to make our lives lives that are lived constantly in accordance with the laws of Allah and the traditions of his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam some days ago we bid farewell to a year and in bidding farewell to that year, 
we were reminded of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and his commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were reminded of his struggles with Namrod and how at the end when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed him with his son Ismail alayhi salam but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to sacrifice Ismail. We were reminded of the obedience of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam and how committed they were to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we have just welcomed a new year. And welcoming the new year, we are being reminded of the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, the grandson of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and how he was <coughs> committed to the principles laid down by his grandfather and his forefathers, and how he was willing and ready to give up his life to maintain such principles. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when we think about Islamic history, when we think about events, when we think about what happened in the past, <coughs> we ponder, we reflect, and we take lessons. The lessons that we take generally is that it doesn't matter what the consequences may be that we must always be obedient to Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We must always continue the struggle so as to remain Muslims, those who are <coughs> submissive to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa taala. It doesn't matter if it means that we have to lay down our lives for these principles, that we must lay down our lives if we have to. And, and we saw such struggles, not only with Imam Hussein, not only with Ibrahim alayhi salam, we saw such struggles with Musa alayhi salam in how he did not give up and in the end he was able to take his people across the Red Sea and save them from the tyrant Pharaoh and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowned Pharaoh and his soldiers in the sea. This is what we are being reminded of, that we must always be submissive to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are being reminded, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that justice will prevail over injustice. And that once we have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will always be victorious. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when we ended the year, we ended it with fasting. For it is said, that the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah 
are days of fasting and days that are very dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ended the year in being generous, in giving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We made sacrifices, sacrifices in such a way that we helped other people. We did not make sacrifice just because we wanted the meat. Because it is not the blood nor the flesh that reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is our intention, our deeds that reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we made sacrifices in being generous so that others can benefit. In the meantime, we fulfilling our obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we began this new year and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he speaks about the good things of the new year or the month of Muharram and he says Abdullah Siyam Ba'da Ramadan Shahrullah Al Muharram Wa Afdal Wa Salah Ba'd al Farida Salat al Layl. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the best of fasting after the fasting of Ramadan is the fasting of Muharram. And the best of Salah after the Farida, the five daily prayers is Salatul Layl, Salatul Tahajjud. And so Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given much significance and importance to the fasting of Muharram. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is reported, Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Anhuma أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صام يوم عاشورة وأمر بصيامه. In terms of a specific day, it is reported that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم fasted on the day of عاشورة, the tenth of Muharram, and he ordered his companions to fast on that day. In another hadith, the companions, they asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Su'ila an siyami yawmi ashura. The companions, they asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to the fasting of Ashura. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yukaffiru as-sanat al-madiyya. It atones for the sins of the past year. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is reported that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he fasted on the tent of Muharram. And he was told by his companions that that was a day in which the people fasted, the Jews, they fasted because they were freed from Pharaoh. That Musa alayhi salam took them across the Red Sea. And when they were freed on that day, they, they, they give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through fasting. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, we, are, uh, you know, we, we have more right to Musa alayhi salam than them. And so he told his companions to fast. And in order to differentiate the fasting or to distinguish the fasting of the Jews from that of the Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ told them to fast the day before. And he said, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said, لَإِن بَقَيْتُمْ إِلَى قَابِلْ لَأَسُمَنَّ أَتَاسِرْ If I live to see the next year, then I will fast on the ninth meaning that he will fast on the 9th and the 10th. And so the fasting of, for us is that we fast on the 9th and 10th 
or we fast on the 10th and the 11th, we fast for two days. And th that's what is recommended in the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we ended the year in a blessed month, in a month that is considered a sanctified month, the month of Dil Hijjah. And we began a new year in a blessed month, in a sanctified month, the month of Muharram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, in the shahra. Verily, the number of months with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is 12. He says, it is written in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yawma khalaqa samawati wal ard, from since the day He created the heavens and the earth, arba'atun hurm, there are four that are sanctified month, months or there, there are months in which certain things that we strive to keep away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and we as Muslims we strive every day of our lives to, to stay away from everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited but in the days of Jahiliyyah in the days of ignorance even the Arabs they observe the sanctity of these months by making sure that they stay away from fighting among one another. And, and they were people who were always fighting with one another. But they stayed away from fighting with one another. And so, if we look at how Allah has designed things for us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, at every juncture of our lives, we are given that opportunity to come closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we were to fall asleep, there is something to wake us up. And we find more events in certain months than in other months. We find that there are in certain months, there are days that are, are blessed. In every week we find that we have a day, in every week that is considered a blessed day. The day of Jum'ah, Sayyidul Ayyam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, it is the master of all days. And so this day, it's a day to, you know, for us to be, to, to wake up. When we come for Salatul Jum'ah and we listen to the sermon and we are being reminded about our responsibilities. So if we fell asleep, we are being constantly reminded. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, remind for verily remembrance, it benefits the believers. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are also told that in this month of Muharram that not only fasting is recommended but in the day of Ashura Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the one who is generous unto his family Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be generous unto him for the entire year. The one who shows generosity to his family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be generous unto him for the rest of the year. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when we look at our relationship with one another, we are considered one big family we have our immediate family and we have our extended family so don't think about your brothers and sisters your blood brothers and sisters alone 
Don't think about your mothers and fathers and your sons and daughters alone. Think about everyone being your family. And that you have a responsibility unto them. And so, when you give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Ashura, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that Allah will be generous unto you for the rest of the year. Allah says in the Quran, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّي لَوْلَا أَخَرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and spend from that which we have given unto you. Look at the uslub or the style in the Quran. Allah is saying, it's not yours, it's not mine. This is what we have given unto you. وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ And spend out of that which we have sustained you with, we have given it to you. Before death comes, and then when you or I, we are on our dying bed, we would say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, postpone my death. Give me a chance. Let me live. Give me a chance so that I can do what I was commanded to do. Give me a chance so that I can spend and I would be from among the salihin. I would be from among the righteous ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he does not when the time comes and it is time for us to die, we will die. And Allah does not postpone the death of anyone. It is said that it is written, and what is written will certainly take place. Kullu nafsin ikatul maut. Every soul will taste of death. And when it's our time to go, we will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, whatever opportunity you have to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spend because there will come a time when you wish you had spent and you would not be able to spend. Someone else will spend it for you. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, اختنم خمسا قبل خمس Make use of five things before another five prevent you. One of them, he said, make use of your wealth before you become poor. Make use of the wealth that Allah has blessed you with before you become poor. You may never see another Muharram, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. We may never see another Ashura. We don't know. That is only in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, spend. Give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bestow His blessings and His mercy unto you. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when we think about the month of Muharram and the blessings of this month and when we think about the events we think about something that transformed history we think about the hijra of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
how he migrated from Mecca to Medina and his migration brought about a new civilization Hijra, my dear brothers and my dear sisters it literally means moving from one place to another but the real Hijra because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said in a beautiful hadith with regards to Hijra Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said La Hijra Ba'd al-Fatih Walakin Jihadun Wa Niyam The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he, he, he said that there is no hijrah after the conquest of Makkah. Not meaning that people cannot move from one place to another. Yes, we have seen over the years that people have moved from one place to another. But there must be that constant struggle where we are struggling to make sure that we remove ourselves from a state of evil into a state of goodness. That's Hijra. That's migration. Migration from evil to good. Migration in such a, a, a way that we shun bad habits. We abandon bad culture. And we adopt something that is different, something that is good. So we shun bad habits and we adopt good habits. When we look at Hijram, we think about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the struggles that he went through. How he and Abu Bakr they migrated from Mecca to Medina and how Kuffar sent people to look for them and how they had to hide and struggle across the desert to get to a different place a place in which they were, would be able to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we think about Hijra, we think about how others were willing and ready to lay down their lives so that the Kalimatullah would become Kalimatul Uliya. That the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always become the greatest of words. Ali ibn Abi Talib, he put himself in danger in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lying in his bed so that Kuffar would think that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was still there and remember they wanted to kill him they wanted to kill the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they plotted and they were ready they had their, their their people all together the youths so that each one can strike him with their dagger and Ali knew this but still he was willing to lie in the bed of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will remain the word, the, the highest of all words La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah This is what we, remind, we are being reminded about the hijra of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam We are being reminded that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he went to Medina he started at the establishment of a state and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala did not make him flee from injustice in Mecca and, and persecution so that he can have a, a place, a comfortable place and just relax and lay back and sometimes we look at life in this way 
We move from one place to another and we relax and we lay back and, 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 and we forget that we are to continue the struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A teach in every environment that we go into that we must make sure that the environment is a different environment. It's an environment in which Allah is always being remembered. Sometimes we forget about this, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he went to Medina and he established an Islamic state. He established a state in which Allah subhanahu wa taala was the focus. We came into this country, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and sometimes we relax so much that sometimes we lose our families. We may lose our identity. Right now there is an anti-Sharia movement in this country where there, was, there is a Republican from Tennessee who said he, he proposed a bill to ban Sharia and that anyone who practices Sharia it will be considered a felony and he could be imprisoned for up to 15 years. It's not an anti-Sharia movement just to remove certain laws, but it's a movement to restrict our freedom as Muslims, our religious freedom. And Muslims are still sleeping, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. This weekend, there is a conference in, in Jamaica, in uh, York College, organized by ICNA, about the same type of movement, the anti-Sharia movement. Muslims need to understand that if something like this is passed in this country, our religious freedom will be restricted. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he migrated, he was not willing to, to compromise. He wanted to make sure that the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being, were being practiced. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, when we, when we think about migration of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when we think about hijrah, think about also our hijrah. We came here, we live here, we will stay here insha'Allah, but we have to make sure that we have the ability to practice our deen, to practice the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to make sure that others understand who we are and what we stand for. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is Sharia. This is, this is migration. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he migrated for so that he could have established an Islamic state. We're not here to establish an Islamic state. We are here, we want to make sure that we can practice our deen just like other denominations can practice their religion. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us reflect upon history and learn lessons from history so that we can implement them within our lives. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, our charity, and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever opportunities that He gave us, that we make sure we make sure that we make use of such opportunities because we don't know when such opportunities will come again in our lives. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, that He gives us good in this life and good in the life hereafter, and that He saves us from the torment of hellfire. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in, bidwanullahi alayhi mila yawmiddin, amma ba'd. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when he migrated, he had one thing, in, in his focus was to make sure that the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was being was established and he had the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the mission of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam huwa ladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda 
وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ وَلَا دِينِ كُلِّ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ It is he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who sent his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Qur'an, with guidance, and the deen of truth, al-Islam, so that he may establish it over all other ways of life, even though the pagans may detest it. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when we think about our relationship with one another and how we ought to help one another, we need to reflect a little upon the relationship of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions. You know, in, in, in our societies, in our communities today, we, we, we are at such loggerheads with one another. We, sometimes we, we, we find that we're not willing to forgive. We don't show that same compassion to one another. And, and, and sometimes when we are with other people, we are compassionate unto them and nothing is wrong with that. And we are willing to forgive them and we are willing to do this for them and do that for them. Muslims, the, the people of this ummah, listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an about the relationship. Allah says in the Qur'an, Muhammadun Rasulullah, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءَ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ Ruhama baynahum tarahum ruqaan sujada yaktahuna fadlam min Allah waridwanan simahum fi wujuhihim min atharis salat min atharis sujood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of Allah. Those who are with him, they are strong against the unbelievers. People who want to destroy us, people who want to create chaos and confusion among us. The Prophet Allah says that they are strong against them. Severe. And how do they relate with one another? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are ruhama bainahum. They are compassionate to one another. What is it that they do? They bow and they prostrate. They are always thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they always seeking the bounties and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can see the author or you can see the signs of sujood on their foreheads. They, they are always in worship and ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one who is in worship of Allah he will think twice of not being good to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is the month of Muharram, a sanctified month as it is said by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a sacred month. Let us strive to make sure that we stay away from everything that is unlawful and we strive to be in complete obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are beginning it, the year, with this sacred month. We begin it with fasting. We begin it with giving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us continue our year in such a way so that we will always be submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us good in this life and good in the life hereafter and that He saves us from the torment of hellfire. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forever bless us and that He causes us to reflect upon Ashura and that every day, every day would be the day of Ashura for us in that we are striving to establish justice just as 
Imam Hussein, he strove to establish justice. Just as Ibrahim alayhi salam and our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they strove to make sure that people were in constant worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they were abandoning the worship of idolatry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter, and save us from the torment of hellfire. لَقَدْ مَرُنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يَصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad Wa ardu Allahumma al khulafaihi ala raba Abi Bakar wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali Wa nisitati al-baqir al-bubashirin bil-janna Wa nisaid al-sahaba Wa nitabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bisani la yawm al-deen Allahumma aiza islama wal muslimin Allahumma nawbit kulubana bi nur al-eeman Wa thabit kulubana ala deen al-islam Wa la taj'al fi kulubina illa lilladhina amanu rabbana ima إنك رؤوف الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يذكم لا لكم تذكرون فذكروا الله على نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أكمل السلام